Hello everyone, Isn't Michaela here, and I have a question for you all. What happens when uh, you come across a really, really interesting coding challenge, but you only have enough attention span to work on it for like three days before you get bored and move on to something else? You get this video! So uh, let's dive into computer modeling, Wordle, and how to solve it with the least effort required, which is basically how engineers do everything in our lives. Let's do it. Honestly, solving things with the least energy required is probably my autobiography. So, Wordle, what is it? Why is it such an interesting coding challenge? And how would we go about solving it if we were to try? Wordle is pretty interesting cultural internet phenomenon that has taken the internet by storm uh, the past month or so. It's a word game where every day you get a mystery word. The mystery word is five letters, so you have to guess a five letter word and for each letter that you guess, it gives you information as to if that was the correct letter or not. It's kind of like Hangman a little bit. If the word, if the letter does not appear in the word, it keeps the letter box gray. If it is in the word, but is in a different spot, it keeps the letter box yellow. And if it's in the word and in the correct spot, the box lights up green. So using those clues, your goal is to figure out what the actual word is. This challenge actually started on Twitter. I uh, saw Wordle going around on Twitter, and so I basically made a, a shit post of just like, oh, here's this really cute game that society wants to use to bring people together, and my brain is just like, I want to beat it. And got a pretty, pretty good response from that post. I'm like, what if I actually did try to beat it? Like, what if I just tried to beat Wordle as a treat? Just, you know? How do we win at all Wordles? How do we take Wordle? and destroy it such that we are unequivocally the best at wordling ever, forever, and always. I definitely have a competitiveness problem, but we're not gonna focus on that right now, that's for therapy. Let's focus on how we actually want to solve this thing. The problem is I can't focus on something for more than three days unless it's really, really interesting. So we don't have a lot of brain power before I just like burn out and just like eat myself off and do something else. So we're gonna do the engineer's way of solving this, which is how do we solve Wordle in the least amount of work possible? This Wordle challenge is a perfect example for a really simple modeling technique that if you wanted to code and explore, you could apply to tons of other things to get really reasonable answers pretty quickly. So parameter-driven modeling essentially tries to boil down your problem, whatever that is, into a set of parameters and a solution. In this case, our solution is how many turns does it take to get to the correct word on average? So the number of turns is our Y variable or the thing we're trying to solve for. The interesting modeling challenge for this is how do you create your X variables? What things are you going to change within the network to try to get to the best solution. The natural thing to do here is to apply a set of points to your results for your guess. So let's say that you guessed a word and you got two yellow letters and one green letter. Cool, great. You can assign point values to the yellow and the green letters and tell the model, okay, the more yellow and green letters you get, the better the guess is. And that's the one you should go with when you guess your next letter. So what it's going to do is it's going to take every single guess and score it based on every possible solution. Once you score it, you get an average score based on how many points you assign the green boxes and the yellow boxes. And then what you do is you take the guess with the highest average score based on its performance on every word in the against every word in the solutions list and use that as the guess. Depending on how well your guess does, your solutions list narrows because some letters will be eliminated, some letters will be locked in, and some letters will be needed to be shifted around, and you'll get a new list of solutions, which you then repeat the process for the new guess, and then you just keep going until you identify the correct word. The interesting thing for this uh, modeling challenge is how many points do you assign the green boxes and the yellow boxes? And it's gonna be interesting to see what the computer decides is the best parameter set for this particular problem. And so effectively what you do is you assign a bunch of random point values for your green and yellow boxes. So for the first trial, let's say green was worth two points, yellow is worth one point, cool. 
For the second trial, uh, let's say green was worth three points, yellow was worth one point. Then green worth one point, yellow worth one point, then green worth one point, yellow worth two points, and so on. And so you have like a matrix of prioritizing green letters versus yellow letters in this algorithm. And you're going to run that simulation for each of those conditions and figure out which parameters get you the solution in the least average amount of turns. And it's, it's really interesting because you can do this for any type of modeling challenge you want. If you can distill your problem into what you want to solve for, minimize it, and then figure out what X variables it relies on and change those, you can solve a lot of different problems relatively easily. And that type of modeling paradigm might not be the most complex, but it's guaranteed to very quickly get you to a rough solution space that might be pretty close to what you want. So I started to build the code and this is the funny part. I started to build the code and I, I was writing it in Python and it was taking forever. The calculations were just, just, just way, way, way too long to actually feasibly run these simulations. Oh God. Oh, that's, that's a lot of, that is slow. It's 0.3% done. So, so Python was out, right? We could not use Python, it took way too long. So we have to use another programming language. C++ is actually a faster language than Python if you wanna do a bunch of different calculations because Python goes through what's called an interpreter, uh, which compiles it and tells the computer what to actually do for every single instruction. Whereas C++, uh, you compile it before even running it. You don't need that third party interpreter in between the code and the machine, and it runs way, way faster. So we couldn't use Python, we had to use a C++. I was like, wow, that's that stinks. And then I found a blog post that someone responded to my challenge with on Twitter. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, why not? You totally should be. And they actually helped me find this article where someone actually already made a Wordle model that uses parameter-driven solutions, which is exactly what I had theorized before trying to go on this whole Python coding rabbit hole. So in the interest of time, uh, I looked at the article, I got his source files, and I changed the file to try many different parameters and give me the average number of turns for each of those solutions. Go. Heck yeah. Look at it go. Running through every solution for the parameters I set. And then once we're done, we do it again with another parameter. And holy Lord, is this fast. Blisteringly fast. The optimum parameters uh, you need to choose for assigning points to green and yellow letters are, drum roll please, two points for green and one point for yellow, which is exactly what the code that I had borrowed had before I even went on this gigantic escapade. So I didn't necessarily discover anything new, but I confirmed what was already there as being the mathematically best point allocation to give to green and yellow squares to get to the lowest solution, which is pretty cool. But if you actually take a look at this graph, it's really interesting. I, I changed the point values from two to 2.1 to 1.9 to 2.5. And then I messed around with changing it to three and one and one and two and all these different, all these different uh, scenarios. And right around two and one is where you get that minimum. You can see that as soon as you deviate from two, even a little bit, if you go to 2.1 points for green and one point for yellow, you get 3.697 instead of 3.690. If you deviate from two and one to 1.9 and one, you get to 3.7 instead of 3.69. So the average number of turns uh, for every single solution possible in this Wordle game, uh, you need to pick two and one points to actually be the best. You can actually see that if you get, if you change it up and you assign more points to yellow than green, your number of turns goes to like 2,700 and 9,900. It's an absurd number. So we definitely know that we need to assign more points to green than yellow. Actually a really fun project because it kind of showed a really simple way you can get very close to the minimum number of Wordle turns by using relatively simple parameters. All you did was, you know, 
try to figure out what is affecting your outcome, change the parameters for that outcome, find the minimum, and you can get pretty close. The absolute best uh, that I've seen on the internet was like around 3.4 turns. I'll check that in post, but I think it was like around 3.4 turns for information theory. And we got 3.6, which was like really, really freaking good. So I actually had a lot of fun trying to make and modulate this uh, Wordle bot. I also want to give a shout out to Sixin Colta, uh, who has been my Twitter contact to save my butt on many different coding projects. Uh, he is a very, very, very good programmer, and we bounced a lot of ideas off of each other on how exactly to change this code, so I wanted to give him that shout out. Big thanks to Tyler Glyle for providing me with the C++ script that I built off of to check all of the different parameters uh, to change. I'll put that on GitHub at some point. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned a little bit of something about how to break a complex problem like Wordle down into a really simple modeling problem with two parameters, one solution change them around, minimize the solution, and you're good. You can, you can, you can go on with your life uh, after that. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to keep working on my glove. I'm also working on an app. That's what I've been doing these past few months. It's, they're, they're really, really big projects. So I'm hoping to finish those soon, but I'm hoping to try to upload more as well. So definitely subscribe if you like weird science, completely nonsensical BS, and Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Talk to you later.